Welcome to Ascend, Life on the Autism Spectrum. This is a bit of a milestone program for us as it is our 10th show. Mm -hmm. I'm Keith Halperin, and here's my co-host, Will Burnick. And and it's got a great t-shirt again. Yep, this, week, this week's shirt is the Presidio shirt. I got this from, this from volunteering with Presidio Stewarts. Every week, every weekend, every weekend they, they, every weekend they garden, they plant weed, a uh, pot, water, and 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 dig. They they work in various areas in the Presidio, including Upper Lobos, Mountain Lake, uh, El Polo, and Walker Creek. Presidio works every weekend, Saturdays and Sundays. What type of work do you do there, Will? I do the same thing. I garden. Weed, pot, and and water. Excellent. Very much appreciated. It's I, a really good thing that you do there, and that's something that we all need. Today, our special topic is devoted to a single speaker, John Commages, and the topic is, what is the Department of Rehabilitation and what it can do for you? John Commages is a volunteer for the Ascend Job Club and is an expert in autism vocational uh, rehabilitation. He's a certified uh, vocational rehab counselor with over 20 years experience. He was also a special education teacher and has an interdisciplinary professional leadership certificate in autism from Fresno Pacific University. So John has a very formal education and years of experience going back into the 1970s in providing vocational services and education to people on the spectrum and people with disabilities in general. Bill? What exactly is the Department of Rehabilitation? Is it just here in San Francisco? Uh, before we begin, I'd like to add that I do not work for the Department of Rehab. I did an internship with them back when Jerry Brown was governor the first time in the 80s. I did some uh, work as a vendor for them uh, in the 90s for JVSLA. Uh, so I have training like the voc rehab counselors, but I'm not actually a DOR counselor, a Department of Rehab counselor. Understood. So, uh, what is Department of Rehab? Department of Rehab is a state federal is part of a state federal system. It has offices in every state and in all the major cities in California. In other states, it uh, it will go by different names. For instance, in New York, it's called Access VR, Adult Career and Continuing Ed Services Voc Rehab. The Department of Rehab is almost a hundred years old. It started in uh, in in 1918 with the Soldiers Rehab Act, and they, they provided vocational rehabilitation services to, to uh, disabled World War I vets. It went public in 1920 with physical disabilities, and, depart and developmental disabilities and mental disabilities were added in 1943. Before our uh, viewers are unfamiliar, what does the Department of Rehabilitation do, and what is vocational rehabilitation? Um, what vocation, what Department of Rehab does is it provides vocational, it is, provides short-term assistance for people to, to, re, to get appropriate employment. It supports uh, vocational goals. It supports independent living. And it also has some other services that you don't need to qualify for, such as you can get certification for the LEAP exam here in California, or for um, Schedule A, which is help with federal, uh, federal, it will speed up the process to get you, a, if you have a disability, for federal jobs all across the country. What is the LEAP exam? The LEAP exam is the Limited Examination Appointment Program Certification. Basically, it puts you at the head of the list when you go to get hired. And it speeds up the process. It, it's just kind of an edge. It, it gives you a little, a little edge. How do you how do you get these services? Well, to get to to qualify for voc rehab services, you have to be found eligible. You apply, and you don't um, you don't need to be found eligible for the leap and the other. But you a eligibility is based on your vocational disability. First of all, you have to have a diagnosis, and you have to have a vocational disability, which means there's some things you cannot do. Uh, second of all, you have to be employable. You have to be able to work. It, because if you can't work, they're not going to train you to work or help you to go to work. Uh, so before you go, you make sure that you can hold a job 
show up on time at 8 o'clock, work 40 hours a week or something like it. It's, uh, it's, very, it's, it's very different from, from school. Uh, you have to be able to work in order to get folk rehab. Will. How is the need for services determined? Uh, the, needs are d the, the need for services are determined through a needs assessment. Usually this is an interview with the department, with the voc rehab counselor on your abilities and your aptitudes uh, and with a record review. Sometimes they'll send you out for a vocational assessment, a, voc eval a vocational evaluation, paper and pencil test sim uh, simulations, or a work tryout, something like this. Okay. And then what happens after the assessment? After the assessment, you go in, you write a rehab plan. You write an individualized plan for employment, and that includes your vocational goal, which you will determine with your counselor. Uh, it includes services and, and uh, who's going to provide them. Uh, it provides uh, for responsibilities, who does what, when, where, and, uh, and how to measure whether it's actually happening. I understand you have an interesting uh, story about this particular area. Well, it's very important that you self-advocate. It's very important that you speak up for what you want. Uh, we had a very successful uh, placement here through the job club, uh, a fellow who uh, basically learned how to do it himself. And uh, what he recommended was that you learn how Department of Rehab, uh, their language, and so that you, and that you advocate for yourself. He basically found his job and got and training and got them to pay for it. And um, I, I'm working with another uh, job club in Sacramento. We were trying to follow in his footsteps, and uh, the uh, the uh, the fellow forgot to tell them that he wanted services mm -hmm. through uh, through the vendor. Uh, uh, and uh, he's he's going back and and redoing the. He's getting an amendment. We'll talk about this later. He's getting an amendment, uh, so you really have to be on ball, and you really are in charge. You really are in charge. An important thing for our viewers to know. Will? Yes. What if I want help writing the rehab plan or want to write it myself? You can write your own rehab plan. It's your own uh, individualized plan for employment. I don't recommend it. It's not done very often, and uh, you have to get it past the supervisor. What I do suggest is if you need help advocating for yourself, then then bring it along. Then uh, you can you can get assistance from outside sources. The biggest thing is to speak up when you're writing the plan. Okay. So could you tell us a little bit about what the services are in the plan? Yes. Uh, there's a first of all, the services that you get are individualized. So no, but I've got a long laundry list of, of skills. I'm gonna of services. I'm gonna walk through them, but nobody gets all of them. Nobody gets all of them. You get what you need, and you work that out with the counselor. So first is counseling and guidance. That's basically help in finding the right job, uh, referral and assistance to get services from outside ser uh, vendors, job search and placement. Once again, that's usually vendorized, vocational and other training, uh, that, uh, evaluation of physical and mental impairments. You can literally go there and get uh, somebody to send you out to see if you have a disability or not. Uh, on the job or personal assistance services, uh, people on the spectrum wouldn't need that too much. Interpreter services mm -hmm. in San Francisco, Tagalog, uh, Mandarin Chinese, uh, Cantonese, uh, Spanish. Uh, occupational license tools and equipment, Technical assistance for self-employment doesn't happen too often. Um, rehab assistance, rehab assistive technology, supported employment, uh, transportation, usually a bus pass, maybe a bu uh, BART pass, uh, transition services for students, uh, and post-employment services if you need them. Quite a laundry list. Indeed. What are the responsibilities of the person being served? Very important. The person being served has to act and, and, and carry this out like they're working. So for instance, you have to maintain contact with your voc rehab counselor and keep all your appointments. You have to talk to somebody if you have a problem. Uh, for instance, you move, you've got money problems, you, uh, uh, you have a health problem. You gotta tell them, you can't just drop out. Uh, you have to attend and fully participate in training and classes. You have to provide uh, reports on how you're doing. So if you're in school, being trained, you have to provide uh, uh, your grades and so on. 
you have to participate fully in the job search. Remember, they're not going to find you a job. They're not going to find you a job. You're going to find your jo yourself a job with their help. So it's like a 40-hour week job. You really have to do this yourself. If you're going to change something, like my friend who forgot to say, oops, I want to go through expandability and get trained at SAP like the uh, successful people on the job club, then you've got to make sure that they know that and it's written down because otherwise you have to go back all through the whole, the whole process to get, uh, to get approval. Uh, you have to communicate and interact with courtesy, consideration, and respect. Okay, for some of us, this is hard. So uh, let them know what you're. Let them know uh, that you're on the spectrum, and this is hard for you if it is. And uh, they'll uh, they'll work with you. Uh, you have a right to be treated with respect, uh, dignity, personal responsibility. You have a responsibility to fully participate and cooperate. Very interesting, uh, and it could be a significant challenge to some of our viewers. And along those lines, if those are the responsibilities of the consumer, what are the responsibilities of uh, the Voc Rehab Counselor and the Voc Rehab uh, Service Delivery Team? They are there. The, uh, the counselor and the rest of the team are there to, uh, to provide counseling and guidance to make sure they are – maybe one of the biggest things is to make sure that you're exercising informed choice, that you really know what you're signing. The, uh, the IPE is not actually a contract, but you have to be a lawyer to know why not. So figure it's a contract. Uh, you have to keep – they will keep the, your information c confidential uh, unless they have to share that with other agencies. They advise you of your rights and remedies. If, for instance, uh, they, they decide on something you don't like, you can appeal. There's a whole system for that. Uh, they coordinate your services with your plan with other agencies. They monitor your progress, and uh, they sign the plan and uh, make sure that you reach an agreement. And if, if uh, for some reason your case is closed, they have to let you know why. The most important part, thing to keep in mind is that services are provided are individualized. Uh, the Department of Rehab is legally mandated by the federal government and the, uh, the people who are trained as a voc rehab are ethically uh, mandated to provide individualized service. So there really should not be any cookie cutter approaches. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, because all services are, all services should be different because all people are different. Very interesting. Yeah. Now I understand we're going to go into how uh, people can apply for DOR services. And could you let us know a little bit about how the DOR service is different from special education services available to younger school-age people? And can you give us a quick overview of the application oh, process? Okay. Uh, there's two things. The first thing is that this is Department of Rehab is not like school. It's not a mandated service. You don't have a right to it. You have a right to be considered. You have a right to figure out if you're eligible. But if you cannot work, you don't get it. If you are not seriously disabled, you don't get it. So it's, it's very different from school, where everybody gets it. Um, and the services are usually short-term, which probably means two years or less. And, um, but not always. It, it's basically, there's, it's limited. The um, Department of Rehab serves everybody with disabilities. They serve, they serve disabled veterans. They serve the blind. They serve people with, uh, with hearing disabilities. They serve everybody with disabilities. Department of, uh, of, of uh, the um, Department of Ve Developmental Disability Services, like that runs this, the um, the regional centers. They only take people with disability with uh, developmental disabilities. Mm -hmm. Department of Rehab takes everybody. Those are the major points. Mm -hmm. uh, Will. How do you prove that you have a disability? You bring them your medical records, and you bring less, uh, the names and addresses and phone numbers of your doctors, and you tell them. And if you have an IEP from school, you bring that. And uh, if, you're, if you've gotten service from, so, from Social Security, you bring that, uh, either SSI or SSDI. That's, that's how. Very interesting. It sounds like a lot. Mm -hmm. um, what are impediments to employment, and what do you do about them? That's what the rehab counselor's for. 
uh, the impediments for on the autism, the, uh, since the autism is, uh, spectrum disorders have a social communication, social cognition uh, part, it would be problems in talking to people, problems understanding them. Uh, since there's a sen there's sensory issues, that might be part of it. Uh, if you have executive function disabilities, it might be problems getting places on time uh, or getting organized. Um, and they will address that and other things like, you know, do you have the skills you need through job training, uh, accommodations or modifications on the job, and most, most likely by selecting jobs that are appropriate for you. They'll help you find the jobs that are a really good match. Are there other requirements to receive vocational rehabilitation services? What else is useful to know? Yes, uh, there are. Uh, you have to be a citizen of the United States. You have to be legally able to work here. So you, if, you, uh, if you're a citizen, great. And if you're not, bring your green card. Interesting. So for our viewers who this may be a completely new thing for, mm -hmm. uh, could you walk us through the application process? What would somebody do first? What I would suggest is fill out the application before you go. Uh, get and get together your medical records, uh, your diagnosis, your disability, uh, anything, like I said, the names and addresses of, of doctors. Get a, bring a complete work history. Include your volunteer work. Uh, job title, descriptions of duties, what machines you worked with, uh, what you liked, what you didn't like, what your skill levels were, you know, were you good at it, were you not good at it. Names and addresses of employers, if you've got them. If you got a resume, bring it. And if you have any certificates from training or uh, like that, bring, bring whatever certificates or, or dipl diplomas you have. Yeah, that ought to do it. What is the next step af after you have gathered all your records and, and all your records together and, and brought them all in, in, into DOR? They're going, the next step is to you have to describe your disability to them. So you have to tell them what, what's your disability. Now, they'll go back and double check, but they want to know, what, you know, what is your disability? And in, in California, you have to answer this question. Please describe your physical or mental impairment that constitutes or results in a substantial impediment to employment. In other words, if you have trouble understanding social cues and social expectations, especially in groups, let them know that. If you have trouble with other, that means trouble with uh, understanding other people or if they don't understand you. If you have trouble communicating uh, or in crowds, let them know that. If you have trouble with sensory issues, maybe uh, fluorescent lights or uh, unventilated rooms or too much noise or too many people, let them know. Mm. So all your limitations then. Um, yes. What yes. if you have limitations from your other disability? I include that too, because they they work with the whole person, and if you have other other issues, typically in uh, uh, typically on the autism spectrum, it might be anxiety, depression. Um, that's all I can think of right offhand. Uh, you you bring you bring along whatever all your diagnoses, all your dis, all your limitations, and they'll work with you because there's I don't care who you are, uh, there's jobs you can do. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll let it go there. Well, very good. So, so that's the beginning, and then what happens? Then you they write the rehab plan, and they figure out if you're if you're a, if you're disabled or not. You're put on, uh, and and off we go. Um, let's see. Well, then you write the plan. Then you write the plan. You you make sure you're ready to go to work. Uh, they provide placement assistance, and uh, you get a job and live happily ever after. Or, Any, go ahead. Anything else we should know Any, that you'd like to share with the viewers? Um, just bring bring your ad, bring your documentation. Fill it out before you go. Uh, you can do it online. You can do it online if you want. Uh, I had somebody go through the other day. They said, "No, go ahead." Uh, it was easier to do it writing. Uh, no, just bring it in and, and get started. If if I can summarize, the uh, be able to work. Uh, DOR will not find you a job. Be prepared to do your own to 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 be prepared to do all or most of the work. 
Uh, they can help you with training, tuition, books, transportation, tools, other supplies. Uh, if you qualify for supported employment, you can get a job coach. That's usually done through the regional centers. Um, DOR is a useful and valuable tool to, to help you get to your, your employment goals. They've got people. They've got resources. They're ready to help. They've got 100 years of experience. Go give them a shot. Excellent. Okay. Now, over the years, uh, you must have had a number of clients that have some interesting stories to tell in relationship to the DOR. Care to share any of those right now? Uh, I'm working with one right now who's trying to do exactly what they did, what you did here at the uh, at the SN Job Club, and uh, he's all signed up for uh, to be trained. Uh, he's interviewed with Jose Velasco at SAP. He's just waiting for the chance to do it. Like I said, he applied and he forgot to tell him he wanted to work through Expandability, who's one of the uh, more successful uh, 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 vendors around here in San Francisco. Um, ask me a sp more specific question and I'll, uh, I'll tell you. So otherwise, uh, that's a good story right there. Okay. Do you have any uh, cautionary stories besides the, the gentleman who didn't know to ask and had to get the addendum or other things like, don't do what this person did? I will say that sometimes an advocate is a very useful thing because I've seen people who did not advocate for themselves who ended up in a cookie-cutter program and it's tough to fix it once uh, once you're in. It's a whole lot easier to advocate first and make sure you're in the right program. If you don't, st you really have to step up and, 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 and speak up for yourself. Understood. And the last thing, um, I understand you're located here in the Bay Area. Yes. Um, if some of our viewers are interested in engaging you uh, to be potential clients for them, for you, how can they contact you, John? Um, I've got a website, uh, johncommages.com, and um, I'll post it on, uh, I tell you what, go to vocational, go to Autism Vocations on Facebook, go to, uh, and like me, like me on Facebook, I've got resources there, and uh, uh, there's a link there, you can use that. So just again, that's Autism Vocations Autism Vocations, on it's on Facebook, it's, it has nothing to do with the work, but it's got a link to work. Well, can, can we go online 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 now and look you up? You can go to Facebook and look me up, yeah, on Autism Vocations, and uh, and I'm on LinkedIn, and I've got uh, the web page. Can can we go on to uh, to Google and 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 type you in? Uh, I believe you can. Yes. Well, excellent. Well, thank you again, and okay. I know we're going to be hearing a lot more from you in the future. You've given a very valuable uh, resource and program to our viewers, and thank you again. You're John very Thomas. welcome. Thank you. And now our co-host, uh, Stacy Kennedy, is sure. going to interview our Best Buddies correspondent, Nona Maloslavsky, about current and upcoming uh, Best Buddies events. Um, so, Best Buddies, what kind of events have happened with Best Buddies? The Best Buddies walk. I loved it. Oh my god, it was good weather. Mm -hmm. I loved the view from the Golden Gate Bridge. Nice, nice. And today is a carnival at USF. Oh, wow. Okay. Wonderful. Are you, are you going to attend that? Or no, you have something else to do? Nope. Okay. I'm going to the Giants game. Wonderful. <laughs> nice. I okay, hope they so win. Oh, good. The ahead. Giants. Yes. So, um, working with you are working with Best Buddies on job yeah. search. So, can you talk a little bit about that? Um, I signed all the papers, and all I have to do is do the interview, and then probably I'll get the job. Wonderful. Soon. Okay. Thank you, Nona. That was excellent, as always, and we look forward to seeing you again in future segments regarding Best Buddies. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice evening. Go Giants! Excellent. And for our final segment, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Sin had our annual brunch and brunch. Cut. Cut. Excellent, Nona. Thank you very much again for your time, and we look forward to future segments with you discussing all the developments of Best Buddies. And for our final segment, uh, we're going to have some highlights from Sin's <coughs> annual brunch, which we had a couple of weeks ago, and interviewed some of our people. Thank you. Thank you. 
So what, what was the first um, event of Ascent that you went to? Like picnics or brunches like this? Holiday parties? No, it was one of the conferences. Oh, okay. And I think that, it, I think it was a conference that was in 2008. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was a, well, they're all at San Francisco State. So mm -hmm. that, that was my first one. Right. And then I started, then I, then I think I went to Optastics and then I went to Ascent. To Ascent. I see. Yes. Yeah, I started out with that too. And uh, 2008 was about the time I got active about it. So, um, has, um, do you feel this community has reached out to others? Have you had anybody um, talk to you about the same situation, looking for an organization like this? Well, yeah, actually, I have. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I go to the social thinking group and uh -huh. Santa Clara, and I, I actually I brought somebody here today, or she met me here, right. and she hadn't been here before, so yeah. Possibly okay. And they also um, sort of the entire Bay Area, not just San Francisco. Right, right, so. that's great. Yeah, I, I mean, all up through the country, really, mm -hmm. I believe. But um, well, that, the website's on. I Webs did, the, I did yeah. the website for a couple. Of that's what's great about social media. Yeah, it's, it's nice to get the word out. And well, um. I suppose that's all the questions I have, and thanks for okay. talking. Thanks. I do have another thing. Uh, I heard that you've gotten some uh, pretty good work a little while ago. Uh, yeah, I, I was part, uh, part of the Autism and Work Program um, at SAP. I got in, um, I've been there about a year. Whoa. Almost this, this the end of this month. Tell us about that. That's really exciting. And, well, I got really lucky because they were having a, um, this was a, it's a really a worldwide program by, by the you know the giant software company SAP, and they were hiring people, specifically targeting people on the spectrum to hire. And I was lucky to be able to be interviewed last year. They they have a really inter interesting interview process where you build these robots, mm -hmm. and so and then they have training that involves it too. And so I got hired into a QA position. And I've been there for, which basically it's, they're paying market rates. It's not That's something. Really good. It's not like a make work, where, the make work type of job. It's a big. It's a big company, and they're paying real market rates. And I had the, I have experience from the past, and I had a master. I have a master's degree from Cal State East Bay, and so <laughs> a lot to pay off because I, I just got that in 2013. So. That's really really good to hear, and for our viewers who would be interested in like. Doing what you've done, what would you recommend that they do? Uh, well, I had to go through DOR first, but I was I went through this through um, a really good, I mean, unique actually um, agency that contracts with DOR that only um, focuses on high functioning people on the autism spectrum. So, which is um, Evo Libri, E E V O L I B R I in uh, Santa Clara. Mm -hmm. And even though I don't live anywhere near Santa Clara, but I still so they're again they they are seeing people all over the Bay Area, and they really know how to sort of prepare people, and they have for those types of interviews, and, and those types of jobs if you have the interest mm -hmm. in the background, and um, instead of placing people trying to pl place people that have master's degrees and minimum wage jobs and that kind of thing, and they and they have quite a bit of you know real direct and they have the contacts too so that was that was good. It's really good. So you are an example to uh, all our community, a very successful, hardworking person who's mm -hmm. who's been able to get employment and keep it. Thanks. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. You know we look forward to hearing a lot more from you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, folks, uh, that was our show for this week, and I want to thank uh, everyone, John Cummages, mm -hmm. Stacy Kennedy, our guest host, uh, Nona Maloslavsky, our Best Buddies uh, correspondent, and I also want to thank you viewers. As I mentioned, usually, at this point in the program, this is your program. So if you have anything you want to talk about, show us, send in, please do so. This is your program. We just run it.